Are you a budding cannabis business owner? Do you currently own a license or in the process of receiving one and need help with taking your business to the next level? Tap Peak Relief Consultations. From licensing and staffing to seed to sale, Peak Relief uses their expertise in the industry to take your brand to the next level. Don't waste your valuable time spinning your wheels. Let Peak Relief Consultations ensure your can of dreams don't go up in smoke. This is Cash Color Canvas, a high level of conversation on LiveHipHopDaily.tv, sponsored by Peak Relief. And I got my guest in the building, the legend himself, Fabo! Oh! Hey, I had to do that. I had to do that. He's done did it three times already. Like, can I get a scream in real quick? It's a natural reaction. I'm so, <laughs> we going to see why that's a natural reaction in a second, brother. I appreciate you coming through tonight, man. I really do, man. You was always on my bucket list of people to get on this podcast, so it was dope to finally have you on here. Man, thanks for having me, man. Definitely. No Definitely. doubt, man. That means a lot. No doubt, man. So let's, let's get into it, man, because one thing I always wanted to know is how you ended up, how you got involved in music in the first place. Like, when, when did you realize that this is, that, that was going to be life for you? Oh, I mean, shoot, man, I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's hymns everywhere. <laughs> you know, it's all you hear. That's how you go to sleep when you look. You know, that's how you're confident after one of those ass women. Let me tell you, I was about to say, sometimes you get an ass women and be in rhythm. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> Did not, not motherfucker. Mother. <laughs> it be to a beat. Nah, man, yeah. I, I just think music is always there. You know, my mom always playing the radio. My mom was one of those people who, you know, probably was running after the Jacksons and all of that. So, you know, <laughs> she one of them type. You feel what I'm saying? Mom cool as shit right now. You feel what I'm saying? Right. What's happening there? <laughs> yeah, man, but I think it was always there. You know, so, you know, six, seven or whatever, mom got me downstairs singing for the company and stuff like that. So, yeah. Oh, damn, you was that dude, too, man. Yeah, yeah, come down here and sing for everybody. Well, get your head down here and sing my damn song. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm so in love with you. Whatever you. That's what's up. So, you basically, you, 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 you've had talent in your whole life, you yeah, know, in one way man, or another. You know, talent just in the family. Yeah. You know, everybody. You even got a song or two in them. That's what's up, bro. So when did you, when, um, you know, what, what part of, you grew up in the West Side? I'm from Bankhead. From I'm Bankhead. from Bank, I was born in Bankhead on the sofa, the truck outside called the ambulance because my mama didn't have no phone. <laughs> I came too early. I, I couldn't wait to get here. <laughs> I, can't, I couldn't wait to get here. Man, I had something to say. What was it like growing up in Bankhead? Hey, man, it was, you know, basically like it was in every other hood. You yeah. know, you got your know, same every day. I, you know, I, I like to say this right here. I mean, it, it's dealing with a whole bunch of people who got PTSD. You lock yourself in a room with a whole bunch of people who got PTSD that been in Iraq or Afghanistan. Boom, there you go. Yeah, that's that's life coming up in back here. Yeah, man. Well, you know, it, but it, it, I mean, I guess yeah, it definitely was. It was a wild, wild era. It's it spawned some wild music like Kilo Ali. You know what I'm saying? Man, like it spawned Kilo, that. Look, dude, Kilo, when I was coming up, was yeah. God. Yeah, like literally. That's what I was about to ask you. Like, especially growing up in Bankhead and knowing Bone Homes and all that, man. What was yeah. it like seeing somebody like 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 Kilo Lee kind of man, spring out from the I, neighborhood? I used to see Kilo a lot too, early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you. <laughs> this nigga here. <laughs> ah, this man all the chain <laughs> jumping out the cabinet like this. Where I put my keys? Huh? <laughs> 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 now nah, Kilo man, Kilo hood legend man, always yeah. around. You know, all we always seeing Kilo. So yeah, man, he dope dude. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So I know again, watching somebody like Kilo definitely would have would have inspired me as far as the music side. Um, eventually, you did click up with some guys who were for the music. You yeah. know, what I'm saying with, yeah. with, with Mook and, and yeah. Shotty Low nah, and all. I was with Raheem the Dream first. I was, oh really? Yeah, yeah. I was definitely with Raheem the Dream first. Uh, me and Dro used to have these battles up in uh, Elther Ridge or whatever. Look, you and Young Dro? Yeah, me and Young Dro. Dro, 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 his, uh, he got a lot of roots in Bankhead. I seen Dro a lot. So when I first started out or whatever, you know, they used to always be telling me, yo, it's the dude Dro, uh, well, we can call him Dro, we call him Dewan. It's the dude Dewan, he over there, man, you know, he fine, man, you know what I mean? He the one you need to battle. So yeah. when we start having these battles back to back, they'll say, he won, I won, but we went to Raheem together. And, uh, you know, it's crazy, you know, that, that, that I'm thinking about it now because Raheem, it's always be telling us, man, you need to do a girl song, but me and Drove's in there. I'm gonna kill the whole world. Everybody's gonna walk your city. Well, I'm there. We didn't want to hear it. You know, we was just shot out, and you know, I we was I was in and out of jail. I ain't care. 
And, uh, you know, <laughs> I had to walk up to Raheem and just give him a hug one day and was like, yo, dude, I can't believe I came up off of Laffy Taffy. You've been telling me this the whole yeah. time. You yeah, know what that's saying? crazy. So he was right the whole time, man. We was just hard-headed. So, yeah, you know, that's where it started at. So, wait, wait. So, you and Dro used to go back and forth on, 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 on the battles. That's crazy. we used crazy. to have some mean battles on the porch, dude. I won. But I bet you. Well, yo, let I me won. tell you something, though. We, 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 for the last couple of weeks, we've actually been debating the Atlanta top 50 list that my man Nick Love put together. Matter of fact, yeah. we had Nick Love on last week. Yeah. And we were talking about how you much. Mean the Nick Love that put me at fit there on the bottom of that list. Damn, Nick! <laughs> Damn, Nick! Yeah, I yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. Nick really don't get how far that I, list I, went. I just, I just feel like, you know, I'm going to take a shot at Nick right here. <laughs> you know, the people who make the list can't really make the list, so you feel what I'm saying? Oh, and, you know, well, don't, don't let rap. that go over your head. Yeah, I mean, well, Nick don't uh, rap. You know what I'm saying? You got to give him that, that problem. Basically yeah, yeah Nick don't yeah. rap, so yeah. That was, I mean, it's always somebody who's sitting around that yeah. they don't have any input. But you know what my, I mean? my thing was this. I feel like Dro should really be a lot higher. Like, nah, we don't give Dro I, I, I half the problem. I still didn't finish giving you my input. Oh, my, I'm sorry. List. Yeah, about you being number 50. Go ahead, I, sir. I didn't want to be on the list, per se, because I'm basically on a list all by myself. <laughs> you can't find one dude out of that whole top 50 that can literally stand next to me on a overall level. You understand what I'm saying? And if you go all the way back to the Typhoid Light Training Camp, ain't no way in the hell you can say lyrically. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, put me on the list by myself. Just have your top 50 D, you have that nigga Fabo who shot the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> he different. I mean, if I really have to make my case, you know, the word geek alone. Mm. You know, should have put me everywhere because, you know, I inserted my word into the English language. <laughs> I mean, basically, the way I said it, when I said it, how I said it. He turned it into a verb. Uh-uh, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Actually, it's a person, place, or thing. Oh, my bad. My fault. <laughs> That's a noun. Fabo! <laughs> I mean, you find every album that's been out since I came out has literally said word for word what yeah. I was saying. Yeah. And then you can go to the club in Atlanta at 12 o'clock and geeked up, come on in, everybody in the club singing it word for word. So, Nick Love, thank you for your 50. <laughs> well, we feel like, I mean, definitely, okay, well, you got your argument, bro. My man, my man, my man, fat, fat, my man, Fabo deserves his own list. That nigga scared of Nick Love. I think motherfucking Dewan Howard. I think Dewan. I think. Um, <laughs> that nigga said Howard. Yeah, I was at Dewan Howard. No more. Shit, I think Dro Dro should have been top five. Honestly, we had this debate last week with Nate. With uh, Nate. I, I, I ain't even really gonna debate the list because yeah. you know I just say, okay, you gonna start something right here. What if we just say? Like I said, I was born in Bankhead on the sofa. Birth certificate said 3509 Main of Court. Mm. So if you went born from zone one to zone six, that obsolete on the you obsolete on the list. So that's basically half the list gotta go. If you went born from zone one to zone six, you're not from Atlanta. Mm. I don't care if your mama didn't have you in that city limit, you're not from Atlanta. And if you're not claiming the city where you're from, you're absolutely robbing the people where you're from of an opportunity because if it was hard for you to get out of that place, how hard are you making it for them? Mm. Okay, we through. Let's go to the next. <laughs> <I'm gonna> <laughs> we, you, you briefly spoke about it. You know, saying when you talked about geeked up and you talked about how that's a, a whole word now that people use almost from song to song to song. Your level as far as being a pioneer and being a trendsetter in the game has been known. You know, what I'm saying like, do you feel like that's something that hasn't been projected as much though? You know, what I'm saying that that when we look at when we do run down the lanes of trendsetters in the game, wow. we don't really think about uh, the boy I mean, I never think of it like that or whatever. You know, when you when you out here trying to do it or whatever, you basically you you. You're doing it to eat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I never think about it as, you know, somebody else gonna take this formula and, and run with it or whatever. It's just this is my life. This is how I'm living. You know, this is what I'm doing every day. So, you know, I guess somebody else can just relate. So that's dope. I yeah. just think that's dope, period. So, you know, whether they recognize you for it or not, you know, when you see it, you believe it. Word, word, man. So talk to us how, how D4L formed. Like when, how did how did how did the collective come together, man, initially? Oh man, I mean, uh basically just being at the pool palace. You know, men them dudes are ha having battles, you know, on uh on the mic. Uh Moopy used to do these West Side wins the way he'll get up on the stage and dun, 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 dun. Hey, Moop B. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Shout out to Moop B. But yeah, uh, it was dope, man. You had uh people like K Rab in there every week he'll come with the whole uh Camerton Road, that Sandtown click, and they'll be in there deep. You had uh you had the party like a rock star dude, the shop boys in there all the time or whatever. You had so many different fashion, the Baker Road click, you had the young money click from Bankhead. If I had to say it was like 
you know, the Cadillac Records type of thing, uh, one of those places, you know, that where everybody come up at. And uh, D4L was just a part of that. Shout out to R.I.P. Shout out my motherfucking brother. Uh, he was the one that uh, just brought it together, man. You know, just always being there, you know, keeping everybody on point or whatever. And, uh, you know, it just came together. Everybody didn't even hang together. You know, it's just his clique, you know, uh, stunt had his little thing going on or whatever, but they was they was together. Word. But when, when, when I came with Lowe, it turned into a thing. You know, I started hanging with Lowe. He started coming picking me up or whatever. Introduced me to these guys, and the rest is history. You know, it's kind of click. <laughs> Laffy Taffy, man. Oh! <laughs> Laffy I'm Taffy. I'm looking for Mrs. Bubblegum. I'm Mr. Jiggles Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Laffy Taffy. That record took off and went around the world five, six, seven times, man. man 13 when, times. When y'all first, <laughs> but when you first heard it, did you think it was going to be that big of a record? Nah, man. Uh, it was just a record. I was with some scripper or whatever. <laughs> that was fun. And the song just came out. <laughs> I mean, that's how that's how it happens, I guess. You know, yeah. you know, you just be in that mood or whatever. Yeah, like organically, out. like you know, what I'm saying yeah. like I, I hear often how people be like, yeah, I never even thought that was gonna be a hit record just before you know it. You know, you woke up. I mean, you run into so many people that be like, yo, I didn't like that song at first or whatever, you know. Yeah. But uh, then it grew on me because my girl was listening to it. I was like. Damn, it was for her the whole time. What the fuck you listening to it for anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, I never got that from niggas, you know what I mean? But, you know, <laughs> that's how I knew the song was hot. But, you know, I knew it was hot the same way because it's like when I used to, before even when I was a journalist, when I was just doing my journalism thing, I'd always, I'd be interviewing cast and I'd be like, yo, so how you feel about the, the rap scene? First thing they want to tell you is, well, I ain't, we ain't like that snap rap. We ain't like this, like that. And I'm like, but this is the shit that's rocking, bro. We and never called it, we never called it snap down here. Okay. We look at that as a derogatory term, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because they heard the snaps in the music or whatever, and you got people like LeJohn who came out and said, uh, you know, snap your fingers. I think that was the only song that actually said something about snaps. And snap. he went at the pool palace, so, you know, I, I wouldn't have credited that to the movement. But, uh, you know, we always call it geek music. That's what I was saying is just go back to what I was saying, the geek. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody geeking. You geeking on this. I ain't here Pee Wee Long way saying we snapping and freaking and snapping and freaking. And freaking, <laughs> and freaking. Geeking and freaking. You know what I mean? So it's always been the geek, you know, because he wasn't there either. You know, he came about seven, eight years later. So he was, that was a direct influence of the Pool Palace too. So yeah. he, and we didn't call it snap music. We call it geek music. Yeah. Okay, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Well, y'all did take it, you took it far, because clearly, you know, at that time, you probably knew, too, as big as the song was, there yeah. were people who were heavy critics of it. Yeah. As if it was, like, something, like, the worst thing they ever heard. And I'm like, nah, like, yeah. these dudes are putting out hit hits. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and they make people like move. This, though. These same people, you know, who, who criticizing the songs, these are the same people who you don't know their phone numbers to call when you need to pay your rent. <laughs> you know, it's like, if, if I could have called you, you know, on your phone when my rent needed to be paid and I'm walking a mile up to this talent show just to win $100, like, I would have called you. I would have <laughs> never made this damn song. I could call you all the time. Yo, the rent due. You're going to pay it, you know? But that ain't so the case. I, if I was thinking about how you felt, you know, maybe I would have took that into consideration, but I wasn't, so fuck it, you know? <laughs> that was basically how I felt the whole run. And, uh, yeah, you see the critics out there. You hear them. Or whatever, but you can't let that, you know, stop you from your quest. I guess that's why, you know, we're so relevant still to this day, you know. Yeah. And like I said, R.I.P. Shot of Low, you know, he came back even after that whole, uh, that all of that stigma, you know. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. want to be a award for what he had accomplished. And, uh, you know, that just goes to show, you know, just never give up. Yeah, man. And speaking about your brother, Shotty Low, man, yeah, um, man, that's another A-Town legend, man, who... who Gave us a lot that yeah. people kind of ran with. You yeah. know what I'm saying? What do you feel like Shotty yeah. Lowe's legacy is to Atlanta as far as the contribution blueprint. he's given? Blueprint, formula. Okay. Bottom line, blueprint, formula to all of it. You know, I credit people, your Jesus and your TIs for coming along and raising awareness. But I give Gucci and Shotty Lowe them that they came and gave you the blueprint, the formula. And then now you see the schoolies, you see the, mm. you know, all the keys and the thugs. And you can see all these cats out here using that same formula to get money. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's what's up. What, what's your favorite memory of Shotty? Oh man, every day, <laughs> every day Shotty. He was always the same. He gonna give it to you straight. Right. That's the everyday memory. Word. Yeah. Word, man. You know, um, during during the whole run, as far as with D4L, you did kind of spark. You, you kind of sped off on your own a little bit. You know, yeah. what I'm saying I looked up, it was almost like you know you had your own solo solo shot, especially yeah. when you geeked up. Um, speak to us about your little run, your run as far as as a solo act. Was that something that was on purpose, or is, was that something else that kind of just happened overnight? You know, oh, I mean, you always you know when you when you're in these situations or whatever, you always want to see what you can do on your own. You yeah. know what I mean? So you know, I, I guess that was my experience. But 
I think with me, with my solo situation or whatever, I wanted them to put the Geeked Up song out, which that song still don't have a video right to the day. doesn't have a video for all of you people who's educated. Um, yeah, and I mean, uh, I think that was my rebellion. I went through the Chitlin circuit. I hooked up with a lot of promoters or whatever, and I was like, yo, trying to get them to put do a video to the song. So that's why everybody basically know the song, you know what I mean? The song on number seven on D4L album, too, if you haven't heard that. Scott, it be me up. Yeah, man, and I, I think that's how Scotty got out there initially, and it caught fire like that. Yeah. Yeah, I was on the road, man. I was performing. I had to show people this song was dope. That's what's up. You know, sometimes, well, it's not even a sometimes. You got to take stuff, you got to take initiative in your own hands, yeah, especially yeah, in the music yeah, industry. Yeah. yeah, you got to believe in yourself, period. And I have the utmost confidence in myself. <laughs> 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 nah, man, I just felt like, you know, once people heard it or whatever, they share their experience. I was just saying to somebody who was in here, and, uh, you know, that, that one time experience was crazy or whatever. So many people can relate to it. Yes, definitely can relate to it, you know. When you listen to music now, how many times, do you hear any artists who, who, who kind of remind you of yourself? No. He's like, next question. <laughs> <laughs> I just know flat out. <laughs> so uh, do you listen to any new acts? Yeah, I listen to everything you listen to. Mm -hmm. I know every song that come on the radio. I know every song come on in the club saying it word for word. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, that's what's up. Do you feel, do you, do you hear any records that you'd be like, yo, I kind of want to get on this. Or, you know, this, this is a cat I would want to rock with. Oh, I mean, you hear that every day. You know, I could, I listen to, I, I wanted to get on Old Country Road. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being straight up. Well, I can hear this now yeah. through my head. Like, Take my horse to the old town road. Nah, nah, man. You always hear stuff you want to jump on, man. You yeah. know, definitely. Yeah. Has there anybody you haven't collaborated with yet that you you feel like you want to work with? I mean, let's do it. Word. You know, that's I'm I'm I love me and two dollars. Stop two dollars. Stop Fabo. <laughs> uh. I, I need to hear you in Future again, man. Uh. I, I, you know, future, what was Future first mixtape, man. I remember you was on that joint, man. We need to get you in Future back then. Yeah, kind of man. Future a good dude, man. You know, I'm definitely trying to get something done with Future too. Yeah. Oh, I, we not trying. We we we're gonna definitely make that happen. You man, know you got I mean? to bring Jeezy on, the, on on that trip too. Yeah, man. man. And uh, while I'm here. Uh, on the uh, radio show, you know, we're gonna uh, make a plea to everybody who out there, whatever, you know, get in Jesus, uh, get on Jesus timeline on it right now, and just tell them, hey man, let's do this Scotty video, man, just for the culture, man, let's do it Whoa, anyway. You know, it's, and it's crazy that you said the, the, the video never happened. Why did the video never happen? We was all doing something else. Scotty was had we I think tatted up had came out by that time. The That's Cupid, another record. Cupid boy, shuffle had up. came out by that time, so it was just like. Just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Bro, tatted up another break. We was playing that right before you came in there, man. That's what? another one of the records. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Tatted up is the one. Shout out to Raheem the Dream for telling you about making records for the ladies. Yeah, Raheem <laughs> was a legend, man. Raheem was a legend back in the day or whatever. Yeah. He was a big influence in my life. So, yeah, shout out to Raheem the Dream. Yeah, speaking about being influences, man, what, what do you want your influence to be when it's, when you say it's all said and done, you say you're done with music? Like, what man, do you want I'm just out here trying to be the best I could be, like the old Army logo. <laughs> the old Army logo. <laughs> slogan I put them together yeah good, nah man. but I'm just saying like uh you know that's definitely what I'm doing you know I'm out here being the best I can be and at the end of the day you know if that benefits someone else that's dope yeah that's what's up so I see you do smoke you know what I'm saying like what, what's, what's your how when did you first start um smoking weed um 10 <laughs> 50 went all the way back I <laughs> said <Say> 10 <laughs> <laughs> stealing roaches out the ashtray <laughs> Hoping mama to whoop my ass today. <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, 10, maybe 10, 11, stealing roaches out the ashtray, you know, stuff like that. You know, I don't, I don't know. I just remember smoking. Let me tell you some wild shit. I noticed that now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if some kid was stealing roaches out my ashtray, I would know that I left this hoe right oh, here. Oh, you know, uh, roach smoking that nigga. Huh? Yeah, I'll finish this hoe. Yeah, like, if I, if I lit this up, this is getting finished. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'll finish this hoe. Yeah. No shame in it. Uh-uh, nah, if I lit this, it's done. Yeah, he got a jar at home and everything. Just keep him sitting up there on the dress. We're going to roll let me tell you something. out of that. Roach OG is still some of the best. It's the best strain, boy. <laughs> Break them suckers down, man. That'd be the best high you get. Okay, then. <laughs> Let me just fire this back up. We hope this come over there where you at. So when you, you uh, did you did you ever think about why you smoke? Do I think about why I smoke? Yeah, like you mentioned, you know, PTSD I, and people I, growing up. I don't stuff. dive into it like that. You mm -hmm. know, I just think that that's stupid, uh, crazy, or uh, dumb. Not calling you that. I just think you should just smoke because you smoke or just smoke. Cause you do it. I don't think it's nobody else's business. Yeah. You don't have to 
come up with a 50 analogies on why, <laughs> you know. I like to smoke my or take my REO with the hole in the middle and dip it in the milk, you know, and all of that shit. <laughs> you know, it just, it just seems like it should take the fun out of smoking. You, you got them niggas, I'm, 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 you, oh, you want to go here, all right. You got them niggas who like to take the weed. I'm a trap smoke. I roll a blunt in th- shit, what, 3.2 seconds. I'm going to have it roll. You, I'm going to roll four blunts. Well, let, let me show you. You got these dudes that like to take the weed, pour it all out, take all the little pieces out, take all of this out, pile it up, break it up some more, put it in the ground. I be looking at this nigga like, nigga, what you roll that motherfucker? <laughs> like, shit, just get on your nerve. Like, yeah, it's just, I'm just saying. Like, you know, it, just, it ain't no art to it or whatever. You what? know, you're trying not to get the hole in it. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, that's the only art to rolling a blunt. Like, don't have no hole in it. You know, don't give me no flute. <laughs> you know what I'm That's, I mean,. I just think people put too much into it. Bro, know? we need to get you a TV show, man. Cool. Like, like, how the fuck Fable ain't got no damn TV show yet, bro? Like, VH1, somebody need this man. Man. Hey, look, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so you ready for um, um, Clock Atlanta Homecoming this weekend? Definitely, man, okay. you know. And uh, I, I am actually also Clock Atlanta uh, alumni, but it's not in the way that you would think. I went to a substance abuse program there, and I finished it, yeah. I graduated. That's what's up. And uh, I actually went there for summer camp one time, and I finished it. <laughs> graduated. <laughs> that makes me alumni. Yes, it does. You got a t-shirt? Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't get me talking about my t-shirts. <laughs> Ooh, boy, that thing still hanging up in my mama closet. Don't touch that. I want people to know why I, you know, understand me. Yeah, only college I ever been to. I'm a job coach, baby. But don't let that underestimate or undermine what I just said. Hell no, nah, baby, bro, because you, you about to go to clock and shut it down. This, we gon', this, this we going to come out, man. We're yeah. going to come out. It's going to be a lot of legends there. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Young Bloods, wow. That's crazy, man. R.I.P. Cuddy. Wow. Pastor Troy. Yo, this is this is gonna be dope. Yeah. Look, Duval. Duval, yeah. What the <laughs> boy sit winning. Sit it well, I'm already getting red sit what winning. See the girl winning. See the girl winning. Boy who? Boy, I'm sweating right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> so Duval, man. Yeah, it's gonna be Bro, man, what's next for you? Uh basically, man, there is no ceiling. You know, there is only the sky and uh space, man. You know, it's it's just up for me, man. Definitely from this point on, just up. You know, that's how I look at it every day when I get up. It's up. You know, I'm going out here. I'm 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 doing the best I could do today. Yeah. You know, and that's all. You watch this. Watch this. Ben, we just stepped into the future together. When it good? Oh! Man, if that ain't some high thought. Ooh, <laughs> no, that ain't no high thought. That's man. real. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to be on a higher level to understand why I just took you to. Yeah. You know, it's sensational, man, just to be yourself sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just just be yourself. That, that's the most beautiful thing in the world, I think. <laughs> you know, and you, you could be so creative and you could do so much, you know, and it's not for you, just yourself, other people. Yeah, bro. Well, I feel like you've added a lot to this game, and I'm, I'm blessed we all we yeah, all yeah. had a chance to experience Fable because yeah, minus yeah. Fable, I don't know if we would that have nigga a said lot. That like I was gone. We all. Had oh a yeah, we are sh- <laughs> experience Fable. Man, experience you know, Fable. hey man, go see GeekCity.com right now. G I K C I T Y dot com for this man bearing me. <laughs> 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 we gonna wake up on the timeline tomorrow. Like, nah, Fabo good. Hey man, it's Fabo good, man. Yeah, definitely, man. Bless, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> my boy. Appreciate you coming through and rocking with us today. Ah, <laughs> bro. Ah, yeah. C A U. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> Yo, it's gonna be dope, man. Yes, you man. know, can't wait. That's a, that's what's up, man. Oh. That's my man Fabo, and that's Cash Color Campus, high level of conversation on livehiphopdaily.tv. You we said higher level of conversation? Yes, sir. Are you a budding cannabis business owner? Do you currently own a license, are in the process of receiving one, and need help with taking your business to the next level? Tap Peak Relief Consultations. 
from licensing and staffing to seed to sale. Peak Relief uses their expertise in the industry to take your brand to the next level. Don't waste your valuable time spinning your wheels. Let Peak Relief Consultations ensure your can of dreams don't go up in smoke.